Good day viewers, this is TechMag TV News. My name is Stephanie Truta and these are the headlines. Four CCC Mashingo councillors sworn in. ZANU PF pushes patriotic bill. Now in our top story, Citizens Coalition for Change councillors who won the March 26 by-elections were sworn in on the 11th of March into office at the Civic Centre offices in Mashingo. The four took the oath of office at the townhouse before town clerk Edward Mukatatirwa and committed themselves to foster service delivery. Rocky Kamuzonda, Alec Tabe, Daniel Mary Kunashe, and Richard Masekiwa are the councillors who took the oath. Speaking after the swearing in ceremony, Kamu Zonda said he's ready to get the ball rolling and work tirelessly to improve service delivery in the city. Zanu PF pushes patriotic bill. President Emerson Mangagwa's ruling Zanu PF party purportedly plans to fast track a controversial law that would punish citizens deemed unpatriotic. The National Assembly last week adopted a motion calling for the crafting of the Patriotic Bill, whose draft was accepted by government in October 2020. The proposed law will criminalize and impose stiff penalties on private correspondence by what was termed as self-serving citizens with foreign governments or any officer or agent. Activists say the law is targeted at government critics and opposition leaders like Citizens Coalition for Change, leader Nelson Chamisa and his deputy Tindai Biti, whom government claims call for sanctions to be imposed on the country as the country heads towards the 2023 general elections. Government information stars were last week infuriated when journalist cam activist Opal Chinono addressed a human rights summit in Geneva, Switzerland, where he detailed human rights abuses and failure to invest in public health in the country. The ruling party has now sponsored a shadowy pro Mnangagwa organization called Varakashi for ED to petition Attorney General Prince Machaya to compel him to expedite the drafting of the bill. The Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Commission has admitted its books were in a mess when the Auditor General Mulder Chiri audited them in 2019. In the 2020 audit of ZAC accounts, Chiri revealed that the anti-graft body failed to account for millions of United States dollars between 2012 and 2019. In a statement this week, ZAC spokesperson John Makamure admitted that Zach's books for the period of 2012 to 2019 were not in order owing to legacy issues. He said since the appointment of the Justice Louis Mtanda Moyo led Zach, they had worked tirelessly to enhance the professionalism and transparency at the commission. In her audit report, Chiri revealed that in 2012 and 2013, Zach failed to produce supporting documents, supply statements and invoices for transactions amounting to between 2 million and 8 million. Meanwhile, Chiri told the participants at a media engagement workshop in Nyanga that the AG's office will introduce vernacular summaries of audit reports, starting with Nibile and Chuna, for easy understanding by citizens. In our other local news, ARTUZ pushes Muthi to release school fees for teachers' children. Finance Economic Development Minister Muthi Nube has said that the government is in the process of drawing up modalities for the payment of school fees for the children of teachers. Earlier this year, the government made a commitment to pay fees for every teacher's three biological children. However, the government failed to honor its commitment during 2022 first term, which ended on April the 3rd. In a letter dated March the 21st, 2022, Amalgamated Rural Teachers Union of Zimbabwe Secretary General Robson Cherry requested Mubi to expedite the payment of school fees for children of teachers. Responding to Cherry in his letter dated the 11th of April 2022, Mubi said that the Minister of Education and PSC are currently gathering information to ascertain those who are eligible, and once the process has been completed, the funds will be released. Wearing of masks remain mandatory as new Omicron variant emerge. Government yesterday said it will not lift COVID-19 restrictions, which include the wearing of masks and a ban on bee gatherings to help control the spread of the pandemic ahead of the Easter holiday. Neighboring Botswana has detected a new Omicron sub-variants BA4 and BA5. The first Omicron variant was first detected in Botswana in November last year and has since spread across the globe and mutated in the process into other variants. During a post-cabinet media briefing yesterday in Harare, 
Health Acting Minister Paul Mavima said government has resolved not to lift the COVID-19 restrictions and regulations, which include the wearing of masks, social distancing and gatherings limited to 100 people. Several African countries have, however, eased COVID-19 regulations, which include mandatory testing at ports of entries. Ghana recently ended its mandatory requirement to wear face masks in public. Last month, Kenya lifted COVID-19 restrictions, which included a ban on large indoor gatherings, such as those for religious services, and a requirement to present a negative COVID-19 test upon arrival for air travel passengers. President Emerson Nangagwa urged citizens to remain vigilant in the light of the new variants detected in Botswana. And now in our regional news, scores dead as stormy weather continues to lash KwaZulu-Natal. Heavy downpours have continued to lash parts of KwaZulu-Natal, resulting in more than 40 deaths and causing destruction to properties. By later on Tuesday evening this week, the heavy downpours and floodings prompted KwaZulu-Natal Premier Slitle Zakalala to convene a special provincial cabinet meeting. It followed visits to various disaster hit areas. Zikalala was also briefed on the situation in the province. The KwaZulu-Natal government said the municipalities most affected by heavy rains, damaging winds and floodings were Ilembe, Utukela, Mgungundolovu, King Setrayo, Ugu and Zinyati. The province executive council resolved to request the province to be declared a disaster area. The Premier has advised the Provincial Executive Council that President Solo Ramaphosa will visit the province today to conduct an assessment. KwaZulu-Natal experienced significant rainfall between Friday and Tuesday, with an orange level 8 warning issued for parts of the province on Tuesday. Durban is one of the worst affected areas in the province. Highways became flooded and a number of tankers and trucks were washed away. In our international news, China accuses the U.S. of weaponizing extended Shanghai lockdown. China has lashed out at the United States for ordering its consulate staff to leave the lockdown city of Shanghai, accusing officials of weaponizing the financial hub's failing attempt to contain the spread of COVID-19. On Monday, the U.S. State Department ordered the departure of non-emergency employees and their families from the city of 25 million due to a surge in COVID-19 cases and an impact of restrictions related to China's response according to a statement on its website. The notice came just days after the State Department authorized the voluntary departure of staff from Shanghai. A travel advisory also urged Americans to reconsider travel to all of China, citing stringent COVID restrictions, including the risk of parents and children being separated. China's most populous city has been laboring under a chaotic and uncompromising citywide lockdown for weeks, with many residents unable to access basic goods, including food and medical care. China's foreign ministry has notified the U.S. It firmly opposes the consulate order. Ministry spokesperson Zhao Zilan said in a news briefing on Tuesday. Zhao also defended China's COVID prevention and control policies as scientific and effective, insisting the government had every confidence in bringing the new wave of COVID-19 under control despite rising case numbers. The financial hub reported more than 26,000 new locally transmitted cases on Monday and the sixth consecutive day over 20,000 according to China's National Health Commission. So far, more than 32,000 cases have been reported across 31 provinces, including those in Shanghai, since March the 1st. And now, in our tech news, Zim's data penetration at 63.1% says Portres. Zimbabwe's internet and data penetration rate increased by 0.5 to reach 63.1% from 62.6% recorded in the third quarter of 2021 due to the growth in active internet and data subscribers. Presenting the 2021 fourth quarter annual report, Postal and Telecommunications Regulatory Authority of Zimbabwe Director General Dr. Gift Kalitso Machingete attributed the surge to growth in active subscribers and data subscriptions. According to 2020 annual report, active internet and data subscribers grew by 0.4%. Taiwan offers clients free new light indoor modem. Zimbabwe state-owned telecommunications giant Taiwan has offered for free new latest state-of-the-art light modems. Technomag has its good on authority as a thank you incentive to all active ADSL customers. Taiwan has made it plain for them to bring in their old modems in exchange for a new light indoor modem for free. 
On the digital drive, Taiwan has deployed more fiber network to connect business and the small to medium enterprises. The local unparalleled state giant has unveiled super fast networks and moved from unconventional landlines to voice over internet protocol. Capability on Blaze Light will be accessed by simply changing the landline prefix number from 024 to 088. The last digits of your landline number remain the same. This has been TechMag TV News. Thank you for watching. Please share, like and subscribe as we keep bringing you more top stories. We'll see you next time.